As of end April 2021, with Intel's Rocket Lake processors having been on the market for close to a month now, there's no better time I suppose to take a look at motherboard releases sporting the B560 chipset. Now, the B560 is Intel's mid-range successor to the B460 chip that was served alongside its 10th generation Comet Lake processors and brings with it two key upgrades, PCIe 4.0 support as well as native USB 3.2 Gen 2 support. For today's video, I have with me a mid-range B560 offering from MSI, the MAG B560M Morta Wi-Fi. Sporting features such as built-in Wi-Fi 6E as well as 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet, let's have a look at whether MSI delivers good value with the B560M Morta Wi-Fi. Before we begin, special shout out to my friends at Mansa Computers who have lent me this board for this video. If you are looking for a custom-built PC solution, do check out the PCs that they have on offer. Their details can be found in the video description down below. Do remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get the latest channel updates. Right, so the B560M Morta Wi-Fi sits within MSI's MAG range, which in turn pretty much represents the middle of MSI's entire lineup, sitting beneath the MEG and MPG series of boards. Possibly targeted at gamers on a budget, this pretty much explains the whole aesthetic of the box with a mortar round thrown in for good measure. Moving over to the rear of the box, key highlights include 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which is fast becoming a standard feature on mid-range boards, as well as Intel's Wi-Fi 6E, supporting the latest wireless AX standard. You do also get support for USB 3.2 Gen 2. The Morta Wi-Fi has a rear USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 Type-C port. Setting aside the board for the moment, we'll come to it in a bit. The Morta Wi-Fi comes with a decent set of accessories. What do we have here? We have two SATA cables. We also get M2 drive screws. A pair of Wi-Fi antennae. A quick installation guide. And naturally, this is paired with a DVD driver disc alongside the motherboard manual. Now, it seems like MSI has gone all out in the marketing flyers department. We've got four of such flyers, which is quite a bit. What do we have here? This product was created with great passion and we hope you could enjoy it. I'm sure I will. Cheesy lines aside, um, what do we have here? Oh yes, you also do get a nice shiny MAG case badge and some decorative heatsink stickers. Now I must say, these are some pretty nice stickers alright, and they're made of textured plastic. I'm not sure if you can see the texture in this video. They've even included battery stickers, which is pretty cool. I've never seen stickers meant for the CMOS battery before. Now one other thing MSI has included with the board, flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers mounted on a keyring in the event you ever need to, I don't know, perform a, a repair on the fly. Pretty nifty. I must say, given the price point of this board, the Mortal Wi-Fi sure comes with a nice set of accessories alright. Onto the board itself, there are no fancy patterns on the PCB, which is just a solid black in colour with some very very light accents. And this is accompanied by bright silver heatsinks with printed patterns that do add some needed contrast to an otherwise plain looking motherboard. It's worth mentioning that this board comes with no built-in RGB LEDs, though owners can definitely hook up RGB accessories via the onboard RGB headers if need be. The Mortal Wi-Fi comes with four. DDR4 slots supporting up to 128GB of RAM. Over to the side of the RAM slots, we see that MSI has included easy debug LEDs that allow you to troubleshoot your build if need be. And if we look slightly further down, we see that the board comes with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C front panel connector, which is nice to have. For storage, we get 6 SATA 3 connectors located right here, and these are accompanied by 2 M2 slots. The first M2 slot located beneath the processor socket comes with a heatsink and supports the PCIe 4.0 standard if you have an 11th generation Rocket Lake processor installed. The other M2 slot supports PCIe 3.0 and as you can clearly see, it doesn't come with a heatsink. In terms of expansion slots, MSI has included a single PCIe 4.0 x16 slot which has the steel armor feature, a PCIe 3.0 x1 slot as well as a full length. PCIe 3.0 X4 slot. 
Now, in order to have PCIe 4.0 enabled on this board, you do need to have an 11th generation Rocket Lake processor installed. In the audio and internet connectivity department, the Morta Wi-Fi comes with audio powered by the Realtek ALC897 codec and 2.5 gigabit ethernet courtesy of Realtek's RTL8125B controller. It's great to note that for Wi-Fi connectivity, MSI has chosen to include Intel's Wi-Fi 6E AX210, which supports the wireless AX standard. As for onboard fan and RGB support, the Morta Wi-Fi comes with four fan headers and they're located right here, 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 and over here. It also comes with three RGB headers, of which two, located right here and here, support addressable RGB, while this header right here supports standard 12 volt RGB. Moving over to the I.O. ports, we see that MSI has gone for an integrated I.O. shield design that just has a simple MEG script and no fancy patterns of any sort. The board comes with four USB 2.0 ports, a display port, HDMI 2.0 port, three USB 3.2 Gen 1 5GBPS Type-A ports, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 20GBPS Type-C port, the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, Wi-Fi antennae connectors right here, as well as your standard audio jack connectors. Interestingly, MSI has chosen not to include a flash BIOS button on the I.O. panel with this board. And there you have it, a quick overview of the MSI MAG B560M Morta Wi-Fi. Coming in at around 270 Singapore dollars or approximately 200 US dollars, this board in my opinion does represent decent value, especially considering that it comes with built-in Wi-Fi 6E and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. However, I do wish the MSI had included more USB 3.2 ports as standard, as 4 USB 2.0 ports on the rear I.O. does seem to be plenty by today's standards. In addition, given the fact that the MAG series is usually targeted at gamers, I was expecting a little bit more pizzazz in terms of the appearance department, especially given the board's lack of onboard RGB LEDs and the plainer looking PCB design. This may not be a bad thing though, especially if you're on the lookout for a board that isn't too overly flashy. With that, thanks so much for watching, do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and I hope to catch you guys around next time.